So you're back for more, I see. Well, good for you. Or if you're new, hi, my name is Ellen and I make guitar tutorials right here on YouTube. And you're currently in the middle of my beginner series, so make sure to click right here to start back on episode one. In our last episode, we went over how to read chord charts so you can play any chord on the guitar. And so far in this series, we've been focusing a lot on our left hand. But in today's video, we're going to shift focus to our right hand so we can talk about strumming. Have you gotten bored with that same four down strum strumming pattern? Well, no worries. If you stick with me to the end of this video, I'll be teaching you a brand new one that's super easy and really, really applicable to so many different songs. So let's go ahead and grab our guitars and get started. So before we jump into the strumming pattern that I want to show you in this video, let's first talk a little bit about form and how you should be positioned whenever you're doing strumming. So go ahead and start with making sure your guitar is sitting really snugly in your lap against your body. And with your right hand, which you're going to be using for strumming, go ahead and just rest that right here on the you know largest part of the body of the guitar. So it's kind of going to sneak in right there um, in your elbow. The next thing I want to just point out is to make sure that your arm here is very straight. Sometimes I'll see people bend their wrist and pop it out a little bit, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that your arm is very straight and parallel to the guitar. That's going to give you the best best um, angle to strum your guitar with. So this right here is your sound hole, and this is where all of the sound comes out of your guitar. It's what resonates, it's what makes that really beautiful sound. And here is your bridge. This is what holds the strings in place to your guitar and things like that. Whenever you're strumming, you wanna make sure that you are strumming between the bridge and the sound hole. That includes above the sound hole. So you can see on this guitar, when I'm resting my hand here, I'm playing right above the sound hole. And that's totally fine. If you play right above the sound hole, it does tend to have more of a bassier sound, kind of more of a loud, robust sound, which I really love. Um, but you could also kind of play more in between the bridge and the sound hole, and that would be fine too. So my suggestion would be just to sit and strum wherever it's natural after you have your hand and your arm rested on the body of your guitar. Next, let's go ahead and talk about how to hold a pick. So like I said in episode one, if you have a pick, then it's really great to learn how to use it when you're learning your guitar. Now, if you don't have a pick, you can always strum with your thumb. It'll still make the right sound. It'll just be a little bit more muffled, not as punchy and bright as when you're using a pick. So if you do have a pick, let's go ahead and learn how to hold it. All right guys, so let's quickly go over how to hold a guitar pick. You'll see a few different people do it a few different ways. Me, myself, I used to hold my guitar picks like this between my first and second finger and my thumb. However, the more experienced players will tell you that the best way to hold a guitar pick is just like this. So how you want to do this is you want to put your hand in front of you and curl your fingers up just a little bit, almost like if you're phantom thumb wrestling somebody, okay? So go ahead and put your fingers out like that. Something that might help you is the angle of the guitar pick. So if you look at your finger here, you have this knuckle, it's kind of pointing in this direction. So you want to just point the pick in the same direction as your knuckle. And so you'll notice when your fingers or when your hand is parallel to the guitar, which is what we talked about earlier, you'll have this little point of the pick, which is what's going to help you strum across those strings. As far as how much of the pick you want to let show, you just want to make sure it's comfortable. If you do it too much like this, it's going to be really easy for this pick to just fly out of your hand. And a lot of beginner guitarists will tell you about this because it happens to the best of us. If you get your pick lost in your sound hole, that is a whole video on its own about how to get that out. So make sure it's not flimsy like this but you also don't wanna hold it so far down that you barely have any of the pick out. So just make sure that you have just enough of that tip part hanging out so that when you're strumming your guitar, it's hitting the strings with just the tip of the pick. Another last piece of advice is that for beginners who are brand new to guitar, I would recommend starting with a thin pick. So picks come in different sizes and millimeters, and so what I'm using here is a thin pick, and basically thin picks are a lot more flexible, a lot more bendy, and that's just gonna help you play and strum your guitar a little bit easier. So if all you have is a thick pick, that's fine, but if you have the opportunity, I would go ahead and suggest starting out with a thinner pick and then slowly progress progressing to thicker picks as you get more and more experience. All right, so now that you know how to properly hold your pick, the last thing we wanna talk about is how your arm should feel when you're strumming. I've seen a lot of people who get really stiff with their strumming arm, and I think it might be because you're nervous or you don't know how hard you need to strum. The biggest thing that you can do to help yourself with strumming is to relax. Mm. You wanna make sure that your body's relaxed, make sure that your arm and your wrist are relaxed. So whenever we're strumming, most of the motion's gonna be coming from our elbow. 
You can see that my wrist is staying relatively still. But with that being said, you don't want to like tighten it up and like, you know, you don't want to be flexing while you're playing your guitar, okay? We want to make sure our wrist is relatively relaxed, but that our elbow is doing most of the moving, okay? Awesome. So far in the series, we've only used one strumming pattern, which is just that four down strum strumming pattern. One. So what we just played with those four down strums are the on beats of a measure. Remember measures are just a kind of bar of music and a lot of music uses four beats in one measure, which is why we're counting to four when we're learning these. So when you're playing the on beat, that's usually a down strum, but there's also something called more of an off beat. So a lot of musicians when they're saying this out loud is they'll add the word and between each of these beats. So now we've got one and two and three and four and. If you count that out, what we're gonna do now is I want you to put an up strum on each of those ands, okay? So we're gonna go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So go ahead and try it with me while I count us in. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Awesome. Now up strums are something new. We haven't talked about that yet. So I just wanna give you a little bit of advice. You don't have to worry about strumming all six strings whenever you come up for an up strum. That's actually really hard to do and it kind of messes up the wrist action that you have. As long as you strum the bottom two or three strings, that's enough for an up strum. So now that we've gotten our feet wet with that feeling of an upstrum, I wanna bring out our best friend, our metronome. I'm gonna keep this at 55 beats per minute while we go through this exercise. All right, so now let's go ahead and practice that new down and upstrum pattern to the beat of the metronome, and we're just gonna stay on our G chord. One and two and three and four and. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Go ahead and hop in. Concentrate on those up strums. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Great. All right, so now that we've practiced both the down and the up strum, go ahead and pause the video if you need a little bit more time to practice that because I want you to be really comfortable with that motion. After you come back, we'll talk a little bit about what I like to call silent strums. So now let's go ahead and jump into what I like to call silent strums. All you have to do for that is you're going to do the exact same motion as strumming, but you're not going to play the strings. Okay, so make sure that your pick is far enough away from your strings that you're not gonna accidentally hit them. But for this exercise, I want you to do the exact same thing. We're gonna turn our metronomes onto 55 beats per minute, and we're just gonna practice the silent strum, which again is just the motion of strumming. So let's go ahead and do this together. One and two and three and four and. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I know this might feel a little bit silly, but you'll see in a second why I'm having you practice this this way. The important thing to realize and what I'm trying to get you guys to notice is whenever you're doing silent strums, you still wanna keep the motion of strumming going, okay? So even though this feels a little bit ridiculous, you wanna make sure that even though you are not playing these notes, you are still going up and down with your strumming hand, back and forth, just like this. So when you do eight silent strums in a row, it doesn't make any music, so I know that you might have felt just a little bit silly doing that, but it's very important that you get used to how to not play your strings, because when we mix up our real strums with our silent strums, that's how we create all these cool different rhythms and strumming patterns. So now let's go ahead and get a little bit of practice in between our real strums and our silent strums. What I want you to do now is, again, just on your G chord, we're going to strum down all of the beats, and then we're going to silent strum up all of the ands, the in-between beats, okay? So let's go ahead and do this together. One and two and three and four and. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Great. 
Now that should have been relatively easy for you guys because in case you didn't notice, whenever we do those silent up strums, we're actually doing the four down strum strumming pattern that we've been using for the other three episodes up until now. So notice when we were doing just the down strums and silent strumming the up strums, we were still moving our hand, okay? That's very important. So now once you're used to the silent strum on the up strums, now what we wanna do is do the opposite thing, okay? I want you to silent strum the down strums, but then actually really strum the up strums. Again, we're gonna do this on the G chord at 55 beats per minute. One and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Great. So that one might have been a little bit trickier just because we're not used to doing those up strums and we just started learning that in this video. So if you found that a little bit difficult, no worries, it's brand new and that's totally expected. Just make sure to pause the video and again, practice that on your own as much as you need to until you're comfortable with just doing the up strums. And again, notice when we were doing just the up strums that we were still moving our hand down on the beat. Again, this is really important to just keep your hand moving all the time. So now that you've gotten used to the feeling of going back and forth between real strums and silent strums, I wanna go ahead and challenge you by showing you this pattern. Again, you can see we've just got down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, but this time I only want you to silent strum this second up strum. So again, we have our G chord on and let's do this together at 55 beats per minute. One and two and three and four and down, up, 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 down, up. One more time. One more time. <laughs> So again, I'm just gonna point this out one more time to you guys. When we were doing that silent up strum on the second up, you still want to do the motion of the up strum even though you're not actually playing the chords. Now again, if that was a little difficult for you to keep up with me, go ahead and pause the video and try that on your own for a few more times until you get used to only that second silent strum. Okay, now I wanna show you this one. Now you can see it's kind of the same as the previous one. We are gonna silent strum our second up strum, but in this example, we're also going to silent strum our third down strum, all right? So go ahead and pause the video if you wanna try this on your own. Otherwise, I'm gonna take you through it right now. We have our G chord on our left hand, and we're gonna do this at 55 beats per minute. One and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, Now what we just played is actually the strumming pattern that I wanted to show you guys for this video. This strumming pattern is so super applicable to so many songs and I'm about to show you just how we can use it. But first, let's go ahead and review the chords that we know so far. All right, so before we move on, let's go ahead and review the four chords we've learned in this series so far. Now something I wanna point out to you guys is you'll notice between all four of these chords, you never have to move your ring or pinky finger. So that's really gonna help with transitions. So we've got G, C add nine, D suspended, and E minor seven. 
all right? So make sure when you're practicing these transitions to remember that you don't have to lift all your fingers off each time. You can keep your ring and your pinky right in place for all four of these chords. So hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with those four chords by now, but if not, no worries, just make sure to pause on the next screen and I'll have all of the chord transitions you need to know listed for you. So what I want you to do is pause on this screen and practice these chord transitions with this brand new strumming pattern until you can reach 100 beats per minute. Now I know that sounds super daunting, that's almost twice the speed we were just going at, but no worries, this is one of those things where the more you play it, the more you'll internalize that rhythm and you'll be able to start feeling it without really thinking about it too hard. And that's exactly where you wanna be in order to play some more of these songs. So go ahead and start at 55 beats per minute, what we were just doing, and crank up that metronome five beats per minute at a time until you can reach 100 beats per minute, which is what we'll be using for the end of this video. Did you pause and practice? I hope so, because we're about to kick it up a notch. Now the reason I wanted you to practice those chord transitions with this strumming pattern at 100 beats per minute is to show you just how versatile this strumming pattern really is. You can use it with so many different songs across all different genres and all different generations. So let me go ahead and show you a really cool example. Let's jam. One, two, ready, go. You just played through even more popular songs with just these four chords and one simple strumming pattern. I hope you're proud of yourself because I know I sure am. If you're having fun with this series, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below as well as to maybe subscribe to my channel. But even if I haven't convinced you to subscribe yet, at least tune into the fifth episode in this series where we'll be playing even more popular songs and you'll be having lots of fun, I promise. Thanks for watching, bye.